back to my youtube channel if you're new here please ensure to click the subscribe button and if you're a returning subscriber thank you for coming back um okay should, you, should i start with welcome to another episode of the series titled sickness faith hey yeah sickness faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god sickness death and the aftermath um this should be episode eight i think this should be episode eight and with me here is my elder sister can you introduce hi guys. yourself hi guys my name is rachel chang the elder sister mm. that's all what was my sister words of encouragement <laughs> you see i should introduce myself then i say words of encouragement <laughs> anyways so um like i said episode eight series sickness death and the aftermath um so today i'm going to be interviewing my sister here mm -hmm. we're going to be hearing her own pov yes um being the first born yes yeah, she's the first born in our family she my brother then yes i'm the last one mm -hmm. so i just have a few questions that i'm going to be asking her and the purpose of this video is um let's say targeted towards firstborn so if you're a firstborn you definitely need to watch this video because she's going to be talking based on you know um like i said her pov being the firstborn yeah so the questions i'm asking her is let's say as regards to that at least regards to that basically she being the first one so let me just get right into it so the first question um in general how does it feel to be a firstborn like grief aside whatever just in general how does it feel because god knows that in my next life i don't be i'd i like being the last are you for real so yeah, you I want like, me to be the one suffering i, like being I should the be the one suffering but i like I be the last one i'm not okay. complaining god in All the right. next life you know you know how to do it right mm. now okay no okay but yeah, i hope you know that we are getting the blessings before the blessing eh, no, to I pass like, to us eh, first no, I like. so as long as it's still <laughs> <it's also laughs> we have like. the majority no problem it. <laughs> it's fine yeah um being the firstborn i could say that okay as a child when you are still young the whole idea of being the firstborn should i say it gets into you because you are still growing up you don't know the responsibility that it comes with it um, I remember back then when we were still kids, we had this um relative of ours. Oh, we went to the village. She um she's more like a cousin to us. So I think I was with my I was with Raphael. That's my younger brother. My the immediate second born. younger brother, the second born. I was with him. So I think I just sent him to do something, and this cousin of ours was there. I'm actually I'm older than her, and she's also is a firstborn. So when I just asked Raphael to do that, Raphael immediately went to do that. And at that moment, she just said, "Wow, that is good to be the firstborn." Like, look at the way you're giving. She gave orders, let him go, and you know he is just went at that. Is why well, you want me to call her? You're not calling her. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at that time we we're still young. So, growing up. Obviously, she was probably I was like ten. I can't remember how old I was, but I know we're still young. But you know, when we get to the stage of you know teenagehood and everything, I said teenagehood, um, adolescence. Yeah, no, adolescence, not adulthood. Nah, <laughs> no, not even adulthood. Adolescence. You know, when you okay. get to that stage, that, the thing changes. That's where you see the fight, especially when they say the fights between the first and second bond. It's and you don't want to get to that. It's always, it's not here, but. Basically, it's growing up. You feel okay. Yeah, I'm the firstborn. Everything is me, and everything. Uh, they have to. Uh, I'm the one giving orders to do things. But by the time you grow up, you discover that it's much more than that. You know, there are a lot of expectations from you. You are more like the leader of your home. There are times that even my sister has some things that I maybe I might just do it like just I'm just doing it. Maybe I feel nobody is watching. But later I see her doing it and. Then it dawns on me that almost oh, yes. Which what was God. that? Oh, don't worry. You want, me, you want me to expose you in camera? <laughs> you understand? So when I see her doing it, I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. you're doing this thing, and she's watching you. Mm -hmm. And and it's very possible that when she does it, she might even do it much more than you. And the next thing, it will come back to you that ah, you're the first one. They saw it from you. So growing up, that was just how it was when I grew up. Um, growing up, 
it's the whole realization became clearer that it's much more than okay you're giving instruction and everything because there'll be a time that they will not listen to you talk 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 they'll say you're talking too much you're arguing and everything so it's not easy but i'll start by saying it's a privilege to be the firstborn it's a privilege it's a blessing i mean jesus christ was the firstborn samuel was the firstborn in the bible so it's a blessing forget about those that you know misbehaved and everything and stuff like that i don't believe in that you know i'm a born again christian i believe jesus christ died for me and any whatever belief curse about firstborn it's been broken and it's been destroyed so it's not easy but it's cool it's cool it's cool yeah i hope i've answered the question all right thank you so from what i've been able to grasp is that number one it comes with responsibility exactly. and it's a blessing and not a curse okay thank you for that yeah. So the next question now, moving into the main thingy, yes, is, hey, what did I go and talk? <laughs> okay. How has life been lately dealing with grief and being the firstborn, seeing that, you know, and, um, like last year, okay, by this time last year, okay, we didn't have a mom. But okay, let's just say two years ago, we had a mom, you know, obviously she was the mother of the house. Like, you know, some things you'll be like, ah, now you're also, not be our house exactly. and all of that. And last year, you know, in all things, God said we should give him thanks. Things changed. And now it's like the responsibility now has moved down to you. And I know it's, I'm sure it's been a lot, you know, been handling grief and, you know, still supposed to show up regardless. So I just want to hear your own, like, POV, like I said, your point of view. How has it been, like, you know, now, not just being a firstborn, because, okay, you were talking then, you're just a firstborn with two parents. Now, you're talking as a firstborn with one parent left. So, how has it been? Well, it's it's not been easy, but somehow God has, you know, granted, has just granted one the grace. Especially when you have two siblings that don't give you a headache. I have to commend them. They don't give me a headache. <laughs> yeah it's not yeah it's god just makes the burden you know less conversion i know um i remember my when my late mom was still alive she whenever we have conversations we just talk and just have conversations she always said something like uh let's get ready when i'm not around you'll be the one in charge of the house you'll be their mother i'll be like i beg oh, mother let everybody go and fend for himself and i'll be like ah, to take a long time by that time they will be married, they will have their family and everything. So everyone will be good. She will be like, no, even at that, you'll be their mother. And I'm like, oh, mom, please. But when it eventually happened, she left. Although my look at it that she left early, but, you know, to God, it was the best time for her to leave. When it eventually happened, I was like, really? So what this woman was saying was true. Like she was actually preparing me for, you know, this kind of thing. Well, it's not been easy because, you know, when she passed on, everyone just came. It was only, the talk was always on me. You know, now you're the mother of the house. If I got to a point, I got tired of hearing that thing. Like, it was so annoying. Every time you're the mother of the house, I'm like, hey, mother of the house, am I not a human being? You don't have emotions too. Yeah. So, um, the whole, I, I think, the whole, I think the pressure was just so much on the whole, you're the mother of the house. And at a point, I had to just sit down, like, please, I'm a human being. I'm still hurt. I lost my mom too. But then again, I got to, sometimes I ask myself, okay, if mommy was in this situation, what would she do? I just feel it's more like a button that, you know, it has been passed on to me. She did it and she has passed it on to me. So I just have to, in as much as it's not easy, I just have to, you know, take that button and continue from where she stopped. I might not be exact, I might not be exactly the way she did, but I'll try my best. And, and I know she up there would desire that I do it much more than her. So it's not been easy. You know, you have to just, you know, deny yourself a lot of things because you're thinking of the house. Like now, like now I have to think of, okay, what are we going to eat? Uh, oh my God, that one, it's, it's, that one on his own. I'm not married. It's more like, a, it's it, now it feels like I am married. I have kids in the house. Anyway, I believe it's good. It's preparing me for when I get married. So I have to sit down and start thinking, okay, what am I going to cook? Then I'm already thinking like okay going to the kitchen planning okay i'll make this make this keep this in the refrigerator so that okay when you want to cook i'll just bring it out like um i'm not thinking for myself now i'm thinking for everyone and i have to now go like uh beginning of the year i have to go and buy um 
this thing uh, a packet of panadol to come and drop in the house so that if anybody is having headache you should come and take it then for my siblings i have to go and get uh, it would you guys have not dewormed yourself well, go and dewarm yourself go and dewarm yourself you're supposed to dewarm yourself last month in, sometime in february i have to go and get the warming tablets for them i gave each of them that they should go and dewarm themselves like <laughs> it's just been crazy Our new mommy. it's just been crazy but seriously it's it's a lot it's a lot but with god's grace he makes it less stressful makes it less stressful but i want them to i want us to also understand that we are humans too i am also grieving i lost a mother so yeah. i have my moments too so it's not every time you expect me ah, i should be strong and everything there are times that i too will be vulnerable because you know it's a, a, a whole lot it's a whole lot so yeah that's how i've been able to handle it like i said it's not been easy but it's been quite an experience it's been quite an experience and I know we're getting there, and I know mommy is proud of me so far. What I've been doing, as you can see, she's looking good. She's not looking late. <laughs> uh, I didn't just use this opportunity to also appreciate you for all the efforts. We love you. We appreciate. We see you. We appreciate your efforts. Oh. Mm -hmm. We are proud of mm -hmm. the woman you have become. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm pray that God continues to give you the strength and the grace to carry on. Mm. And. For those watching, please let's try and reduce, you know, the whole, you know, uh, emphasis on first bond. Like, just like she said, they're also human beings as well. Exactly. I feel like there's a more better way to, like, you know, in, like, in a, t and tell them that, okay, see, you, you have to up your game. Mm -hmm. but, but the whole thing that you're always like, um, it's like you're trying to make them feel and. Like I say, keep aside their emotions. Their own emotions, yes. yes exactly. Which is very dangerous because one day they could break down. So I feel we should be a little less... um be subtle with the way we... Yes, we should be... I think there's a word that I'm looking for that I can't really get, but mm -hmm. towards the first point. So thank you so much. So moving to the next question. um, Do you regret being the first one? And in the next life, will you want to be the first one? Hmm. do i regret <laughs> when i say regret yeah sometimes i always i think about it like okay what would it have been like if i had like an elder sister or i had seniors what would it be like sometimes the thought crosses my mind but will i say regret i don't think i've ever regretted i know yeah there are times i'll complain and everything but i don't think i've ever regretted because like i said earlier i see it as um i see it as a blessing it's, a, it's not a mistake it's not a mistake and i know god bringing me make uh, making me be the first one in the house um came with a purpose and by the grace of god i know i'm living up to that purpose and everything so i have never you know regretted it even if it's cumbersome it's stressful a whole lot of responsibilities all eyes are on you and everything and i see it as like i said i see that as a privilege about to be able to lead people for people to look up to me is a thing of joy a thing of blessings for someone to say okay i'm following in the footsteps of this girl so it also makes me to to look at myself and ensure that not like i'm trying to be perfect but i try to look at myself evaluate myself and see that at least i'm doing the right thing not just um not just at least to please god and also to, to um, um for those who are you know right behind me and everything so it's also like a kind of should i say checkmate for myself or something like that i don't know if that's the word to use evaluation so, uh, evaluation and everything so um, uh, like I said, I'm not perfect. You can never be perfect, but you know God is helping us. Then about the regrets, I've never regretted. Then in the next life, will I want to be the first one again? Yes, I'd like to be the first one again. Should. Yes, I will. I will. I'd love to be the first one. I'd love to be the first one. Yeah, I'm going to yes. be the last one. <laughs> At least, and again, being the first one makes you strong. Let me just say that one. You're able to, there's some so challenges that come. You're not strong. Oh, obviously, you're not strong. <laughs> There's some challenges that come your way and you know you can be able to withstand like all those runs I've been doing last week. If it was you be able to do it. When eh? you were not around eh? last day, who was No, not that even one? that one. This one of uh, mommy stuff that we're pushing. It will be tiring. I'm going to go to the point you will be crying. I beg, I know you. Hey, I will be crying, but I'll still wake up the next day and go and do it again. You'll be tired. The next thing you'll come and you'll say, hey, Richard, me, I'm tired. Wait, did he attend to me? They should leave their attend to me. I don't want it again. <laughs> so uh, no, it actually makes you all stronger. And to every firstborn out there, just know that you're special. And please give yourself a break. Oh, you didn't ask me to. Okay, I'm just. I'll give it to myself. Is it final yeah, words? The next. Okay. okay. So the last question is what you said. Final words, okay. advice, like um, this um, firstborn you're going to see. 
this your boss that um, died like for instance now you're meeting with her first born like what would okay. you advise her and other first okay. or even people out there okay is it for those that lost their parents or first bonds general oh uh, you can talk for first bonds general you can talk for those who have lost parents and have to you know <coughs> um take responsibility of their parents okay yes to first bonds general it's not easy but take it as a blessing always say to yourself every day that i'm a blessed firstborn don't think about all those negative um negative statements they have about firstborn they are this they are that no stick to what you are you are a child of god you're a royal priest who keep prophesying same positive things about yourself you know it's not a mistake that god made you a firstborn and even if you've made mistakes we all we all learn from our mistakes it's it's it's, it's not a crime to make a mistake but the important thing is okay learning from what from that mistake and when you look up to God, definitely He'll give you the strength. Don't try to be perfect. If you're if you're tired sometimes, tell your siblings to do whatever it is that you need. Don't always have that, you know, you want to form that macho like every time I'm the first born. Yeah, strong. I'm strong and everything. There are times it's like I said, we're all humans. At times you need to be vulnerable. It's not a sign of weakness. It's just being human. But the but the important thing is after that you get yourself back and you know continue with it. So keep up the good work. Then for those who um, maybe have lost their relatives, like, okay, I lost my boss in the office. And just like us, her first child is um, it's a very young girl. She's the first one. If I was to meet someone like her, I would just tell her, babe, take a deep breath. After taking a deep breath, just look up to God and say, Lord, here am I before thee. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Just grant me the strength i need that's the thing look up to god he should give you the strength because now you have a responsibility of not just yourself your dad as if the dad is alive but in this case to the person i'm referring to her dad is alive and you have your sibling so just take a deep breath and ask god for strength and guidance that's the only thing i've got to realize over this one year plus since we lost our mom that god is the only person that gives you strength your source is our source of strength that's the thing you always he's the only one just look up to him i know yes you have friends and everything yes they are just secondary but the primary person you should look up to is god after him then he will definitely bring people that would help support you but look up to him he will definitely see you through and like i said sorry to go back again if you've made a mistake before it's not the end of the world just for you to sit down reflect reevaluate check what was that mistake okay what should i have done what shouldn't i have done and get back on track and god will see you through okay thank you so much um i just have one advice this is to non firstborns who are grieving if you're a sibling that is not a firstborn um my advice is that let's be more supportive you know to our firstborns yes yeah Let's try to be supportive, help in the best way we can. In that way, we are making their load less heavy, do you get? Because it's not easy. It's really, really not easy. So, basically, that's just it. Yeah, I, honestly, I need to thank my baby, yes. She and her brother, they've really been, like I said, they don't give me headache at all. They can be naughty at times, but they don't give me headache. I, I really love them so much. I love the support, the prayers, you know, the messages you always send to me to encourage me. I really, really appreciate it okay so that brings us to the end of this episode i hope you are blessed i hope you have learned one or two things and uh, i don't know what else to say but in if you love this video which i think you should you are supposed to love this video please ensure to like share comment please comment just air out your views yeah. your thoughts any nice. contribution if there are maybe things you felt like oh we didn't say or we were not supposed to say just lay down in the comment section and most importantly please subscribe you guys subscribe i said what subscribe all right thank you so much see you in the next one bye oh i forgot to say thank you rachel for coming to each other bye all right guys bye